double kill! Recon mission ready! Find the bus! Sniping run bad. ready for vector! Mega kill! Hey guys, Weapon Game Bad today bringing you another video, and today we're going to be covering the MG42 for Call of Duty Vanguard. So the MG42, this is kind of a conversion, but not really. We're going to be doing a conversion with this probably tomorrow for the MG15. However, I really want to cover this gun because it is an iconic machine gun and really paved the way for a lot of the machine guns that we see today. Uh, a, lot of the, a lot of technology coming out of World War II from Nazi Germany seemed to do that. So the MG42, we're going to build this thing on a jumping game. We'll show you the recoil pattern and see how it handles in-game against bots with what I believe is probably the optimal build while staying true to the real-life design of the MG42. So let's go ahead and back out. This is our final design for the MG42 or the Machine Gear 42, developed in 1942 in Nazi Germany. So backing out, we'll strip this thing down to base. Now the first attachment here, the muzzle, we're actually going to keep this the same as it is. This is the correct muzzle device on here, so we don't even need to touch it. Obviously, we have other options which could kind of look similar. We have the flash hider, as well as the recoil booster, which would actually increase your fire rate, which is insane since this weapon fires uh, around 1,200 rounds per second in real life and, or 1,200 rounds per minute in real life and in the game. But you could definitely do that with the cost of accuracy going down one, but you're gonna boost the fire rate by two there. So we'll keep that at base. The barrel is actually gonna be the base barrel as well. You can see the other options here. We have, there's no extended barrel for the same aesthetic design of the real life MG42 barrel. So we need to keep the base barrel just cause that's the only barrel that stays true to the actual MG42. Now, unfortunately I was hoping we would kind of have, uh, well, we'll cover this another time, but we do have some other interesting options here for barrels, but we'll leave that as it is for the MG42. The optic, now the optic, obviously, this is kind of a tricky one. Um, which one should we put on this? You have the iron sights, you have the uh, the aerial mounted uh, anti-air optics on there, which it would be on this weapon if it were, say, mounted on the in a plane. But we're gonna actually gonna go down. We have two unique iron sights down here at the bottom. We have basically enlarged type of iron sights with a, a larger leaf sight on the rear aperture. So we're actually gonna go with this second one here, The the IS-89MG versus the 88, you have a little bit bigger of a rear aperture there to allow you to see your target while viewing through the iron sight. So you really don't need any optic on this. I think this one kind of does the trick. All you would need, you'll see how good that looks in game. So we'll go ahead and select that. Stock option, we could leave this at base. However, there's also a really another good option here being the VOD 64M. So this is gonna increase your aim and stability by four. Your recoil control is gonna be increased by three, your accuracy increased by three, and your flinch resistance increased by two. So those are all the pros. The cons here are minus three to movement speed and minus two to aim down sight speed. We're gonna be using this like a light machine gun, so we really don't care about those cons too much. The pros we get here are huge for this weapon. So we'll go ahead and select the VOD 64M. Now for proficiency, we're gonna go ahead and do tight grip. This is gonna give us the plus one for accuracy and recoil during sustained fire. Since it is a light machine gun, we're gonna be bursting typically, but we will at sometimes have sustained fire to suppress, so we're gonna want that. Now for kit, we're gonna go ahead and do defender. This is gonna give us plus one to the mounted movement. So when we have this thing mounted um, on an object to try and patrol a lane, we'll be able to go side to side a little bit easier and get shots on target better. So defenders. Now for the rear grip, this is another unique one. Obviously you can stay with the base to stay true. However, the grips in this game, I, I actually pretty impressed. They they really don't, unlike Cold War, they don't add any odd tape, tapes on the weapon that really take away from the aesthetics. So you can really go with any one here. It really retains a lot of the same look that you would want for the rear grip. So the pine tar is the one we're gonna want for this one. This is gonna give us plus two to the recoil control and plus one to hit fire accuracy. So. The recoil control taking huge boosts here or improvements with this and the stock. The con here are the aim down sight speed, but again, not a big deal. This is a machine gun. We're not running and gunning with this. So we'll select the pine tar. Magazine option. We're actually going to leave it with the base. It's going to give us the 125 round drum of the 792 by 57 millimeter Mauser round, which is what this weapon takes in real life. However, you do have options for a 6.5 millimeter. You have a 50 round belt of the 8 millimeter, which is technically the same thing as a 792 by 57 millimeter. You also have, and then you have the 250 round box of the, of the eight millimeter, but you also have a 13 millimeter anti-material round. So this is 13.2 by 92 tough or TUF anti-material rounds. Um, this was used basically anti-tank rounds 
particularly on different German rifles, as well as some machine guns that were developed. Uh, the MG-18 TUF was one of them as well during World War I. So that's an option here, which is, again, a very large bullet for this weapon. So we'll just ignore that one for now. We'll stay with the base 125 round uh, drum of the 792 by 57 Mauser rounds. Now for the ammo type here, we can go ahead. I'm going to put on full metal jacket just for bullet penetration. You have other good choices here. Like a hollow point will increase your limb damage. However, the cons here are the damage range goes down quite a bit. So we're going to stay with the FMJ just for that bullet penetration. You also have lengthen, which is a good one to increase your bullet velocity. But for the purpose of this, we'll just go with full metal jacket. And then for the underbarrel, uh, it should be obvious we're going to want the bipod here. But you can obviously just see really quick our other options here. You can put a, a flashlight on there. You have a heavy foregrip, some different options here for grips. We're going to want the bipod to stay true to real life. This is going to increase our recoil control when mounted, crouched, or prone by four points, which is pretty huge for this weapon. So all in all, I think we have four, five, six, seven, eight uh, recoil control points added to this weapon in, in a total. And the cons here are the sprint fire movement speed minus one, which again, if you're using this like a light machine gun, how it should be used, not a big deal. Now, some interesting things. We have the charger handle here. Uh, the roller charger handle on the left-hand side, that big elongated thing right above the, uh, where you see it kind of lined up evenly with the trigger guard there. So that'll be where we char basically our charging handle will charge around. Um, you have the rear aperture, the front aperture. Now, one interesting thing here is the quick change barrel on this weapon. I really wish they had a feature for this in game if you overheated the barrel where you could just change the barrel so you see this little device here let's see if we preview the weapon we might get a better look at this actually if we preview the device or the weapon hopefully it'll switch out to the other side so on the on the right hand side of the barrel right where the barrel starts when it flips around here there's a little mechanism where you would pop this option out and the barrel itself would slide out you would grab that barrel uh, obviously it would be hot so typically the operators would have gloves you pull that barrel out and swap another one in so unfortunately the preview isn't really showing us what we want so you look at it here this little uh i guess whatever this device is here on the right hand side you see it lined up almost with that rear aperture here you would pull this out and out comes the barrel would pop out here slide out you would pop a new barrel in. you can see it just fits straight in there and then you'd push this little device back in it lock in the barrel in place so you can see there it's basically uh, you see what the charging handle is and then forward uh, in front of the ejection port for the rounds. Uh, now, this weapon fired 792 by 57 nine non-disintegrating linked uh, ammunition. So obviously that link would stay intact. It wouldn't disintegrate or break up. Um, and then we have the bipod. So really nice looking weapon. Again, the the uh, buttstock to put on this, again, is just another option of the buttstock. It's still basically the right buttstock we would want for this. Very nice looking weapon. The MG42. So let's go ahead and jump in game. We'll go over the recoil pattern and then jump in game against bots. So jump it on in. The recoil for this weapon goes basically straight up, but you'll see it'll kind of kick a little bit to the left slightly, and then it will zigzag back to the right. So essentially you're going straight up, but it's gonna be zigzagging left to right a little bit. Nothing crazy, very easy to control. Now, if I don't control it at all, that would be the recoil pattern. Now, controlling it, again, you're going to be able to stay with a nice tight cluster for this weapon. It's not going to be able to, it's not going to climb very easily. You can keep it pretty center mass for uh, center mass shots to the torso area very easily at pretty decent ranges, I would say. And then, really, ideally, how you want to use this is going to be mounted, especially with the attachments we have here. You could mount it on an object or utilize the bipod by being in prone. And here's where you get the, the big accuracy bump. So if we just let this thing rip while in prone, it'll climb very little bit. It's very easy to control that. You'll, so you'll see it just do a burst with it not being controlled versus being controlled. Then we'll line these up. Uh, when you control it, you honestly, you're compensating very, very slightly. I actually brought it down for negative recoil is how little you need to compensate for this. So essentially you can mount this thing and just let it rip. You barely need to adjust for any type of recoil. Um, and that's really good for the weapon, obviously being on a bipod and the attachments we have on here, we have maximum recoil control, which is really good to see, especially with this high rate of fire to really utilize it how you want to use it per real life. So jump into game here against bots. We're just going to be using the MG42 um, as its role was intended. And that is basically as machine gun support. So we're going to be trying to utilize it as mounted or in prone with the bipod as much as possible. Not running and gunning very much here at all. 
There will be some close quarters engagements where I'm firing this thing while standing at the shoulder. But uh, other than that, we're trying to mount and just patrol this one lane where the bots are just going to charge up. So you just can see some good machine gun action with the MG42. Now, the MG42 has been in service since 1942 and fires at 7.92 by 57 millimeter Mauser round. Now, you may be familiar with the what ultimately was the successor to this being the MG3, which is essentially the same weapon, just caliber converted to a 7.62 millimeter by 51 NATO round. So the MG3, that's a more modern variant of this, the MG42. Overall, essentially the same exact weapon, just some minor tweaks on the weapon to allow it to accept that larger NATO 7.62 millimeter round. Now, the MG42 was built to replace the MG34, which had a very good reputation and a very reliable weapon around 850 rounds per minute for the MG34. However, it was more expensive to produce the MG34. So they needed a, the Germans needed a quicker solution to cheaply uh, produce more machine guns to get them out in the field. So the MG42 is largely stamped parts versus the MG34 was more of a handmade milled type of weapon. And uh, the stamped parts here for the MG34 made it easy to mass produce. And eventually, uh, production of the MG34 was surpassed by the MG42. However, both machine guns were still being produced throughout the entirety of World War II. Um, and the MG34 was actually, I believe, the more the, was more preferred amongst the troops. More reliable weapon, slower rate of fire, maybe allowed it to get shots on target better. But the MG30, MG42, I should say, obviously had its reputation nicknamed the Hitler's buzzsaw, buzzsaw because of the unique sound which here in game is captured perfectly, honestly. The weapon sounds very true to life, everything that I've heard of the weapon uh, in movies and TV and live fire demonstrations that I've seen online. Um, it, it sounds very accurate and, and it lives up to the nickname Hitler's Buzzsaw. Now this weapon, again, a lot of fun to use here in game. Um, it's been in service since 1942 through present. You still see these around. Uh, I don't know if any are still actually in service these days. I think the majority of them were replaced by basically variant of this, mainly the MG3 I know is still in service in Germany today as they're trying to replace it with the HK-121 or the MG5 eventually and the MG4 also. Um, the wars this thing was fought in was World War II, the Algerian War, you also had it in the Portuguese Colonial War, Yugoslavia War, and the Congo War. So it's seen some action all over the world. Um, manufacturers are a bunch of different German companies. Designer was Warren Gruner, I'm probably mispronouncing that name. The production 1942 through 1945, number of units built was 423,600 units of the MG42. And as I said, there was a number of variants for this. The weight or the mass of the weapon was 25.57 pounds with the length overall being 47 inches. The barrel length here, which is captured accurately in game is gonna be 20.9 inches or 430 millimeters. Then the cartridge, as we said, is at 792 by 57 millimeter Mauser, also referred to oftenly, often as the 8 millimeter round, which they do so here in game. The action is a recoil operated roller locked system, with the rate of fire in real life being 1200 rounds per minute, which is varied anywhere between 900 and 1500 rounds per minute with different bolts on the weapon. So anywhere up to all, anywhere from 900 all the way up to 1500 rounds per minute, with the average being around 1200 rounds. Per minute practically 153 rounds per minute because you're going to be bursting this thing um typically you want to be firing three to five rounds or on the tripod 20 round bursts so that's really how this thing was used in world war ii muzzle velocity in real life is going to be 740 meters per second or 2428 feet per second the effective range is going to be 200 to 2000 meters or 219 to 2187 yards Sights and the apertures were adjustable out to 3,500 3, meters or 3,828 yards with a tripod and telescopic sight, which could be equipped on this while on the tripod mount. Maximum fire range was 4,700 meters or 5,140 yards with the feed system being anywhere from a 50 to a 250 round box magazine. And again, you have both options here in game. You have the fifth round belt and the 250 round box of the 792 by 57 millimeter or the eight millimeter bullets. Now the sights again, iron sights, anti-aircraft anti sights, which you can get in this game on the weapon as well for the front aperture, as well as 
uh, telescopic sights, which typically weren't only used when mounted on the tripod. So that is our MG42 or our Machine Gruer 42. Again, it inspired a lot of different weapons. Mainly, the main thing that comes to mind is the MG3. However, uh, Call of Duty Cold War and Warzone, the Amelie lead machine gun is basically a uh, variant of this, chambered in 5.56 by 45 millimeter NATO. And then on the flip side, you have the MG3, which is 7.62 by 51 millimeter NATO. So those are the different variants of this. Let me know what you guys think down below of the MG42 here in game and in real life. We'll be doing a couple different variants of this weapon. Uh, you can make some different conversions for this that I'll cover here in the future. Let me know what you guys think down below. Till next time, this is Buckner Gaming with the MG42 in Call of Duty Vanguard. Till next time, Buckner Gaming, out.